What does it mean to blow the whistle at work in California? People complain about things all the time, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the law was broken. So what's the legal definition of a whistleblower? And since the majority of people who watch this video will probably be employees, if you blew the whistle, what kind of protections do you have? If you were fired, what kind of remedies are available to you? Should you even contact a lawyer? We're going to unpack and answer all of those questions in this video. It's usually not that blatant, but people get fired all the time after blowing the whistle. So let's take a look at the law. There's a lot more than just one whistleblower law in California. There's a bunch of them. And in this video, we're going to cover the main ones. The first is California Labor Code section 1102.5, which is all about when employees refuse to violate a law and their employer retaliates against them for that. Second, Health and Safety Code 1278.5. This is when healthcare workers report unsafe patient care or conditions and are terminated or retaliated against for it. Third, Labor Code Section 6310. This is all about when an employee complains about an unsafe work environment and then gets in trouble for the complaint. Fourth, the False Claims Act, or also known as key TAM cases. This is when a private company commits fraud on the government, such as not paying proper taxes or submitting false invoices to the government. And fifth, the Sarbanes-Oxley whistleblower law is all about when employees of publicly traded companies complain about or report that their employer is not reporting correct financial information to the public. So let's jump into each one of these in much more detail. California Labor Code section 1102.5 subsection C says that it is an unlawful employment practice for an employer to terminate an employee if they refuse to violate a state or federal law or refuse to participate in a violation of a state or federal law. Here's an easy example. Say you work at a pharmaceutical company and you sell a drug that requires FDA approval. If your boss asks you to go sell that drug before the company has received approval and you refuse, then the, state, then the statute has been violated when they terminate you. Subsection B of the statute is just as important. It says that it's an unlawful employment practice and an employer is not allowed to retaliate or terminate an employee who has reported information to the government the government, governmental agency, and the employee had reasonable cause to believe that the information discloses a violation of a state or federal statute. So to continue our FDA pharmaceutical example, let's say you, again, work for that company, and you go and you complain to the FDA, say, my employer is selling a drug without FDA approval. If your employer finds out about that and terminates you, they break the law. California Health and Safety Code 1278.5 is a very important statute for individuals in the healthcare industry. If you are a doctor or a nurse or any other type of healthcare worker and you complain about unsafe patient care or conditions and then you are terminated or retaliated against for that complaint, the law is violated. Now, you can report or complain to your employer, or you can report or complain to a governmental agency. In either situation, you are protected. Now, this statute's pretty cool because it creates a rebuttable presumption of retaliation if you complain and then you're fired within 120 days. If you're fired in that, in that zone, there's a presumption that there was retaliation. Now, okay, how does this statute play out in the real world? Let's say you're a surgical tech and you realize they're not sterilizing the tools properly. Or let's say you're a physician and you witness other physicians missing diagnosis or abusing patients and then you complain about it. If you're fired, again, the violation of law has happened and you can bring a claim. California Labor Code section 6310 is all about safe working environments. It is unlawful for an employer to terminate an employee because that employee has filed an oral or written complaint of unsafe 
working conditions or practices. Now, the employee can submit that complaint to OSHA or the employer itself, or the employee could simply have participated in safety meetings or safety uh, committees on OSHA if the employer terminates that employee because of their participation in safety-related activities, the violation of law has occurred. Federal and State False Claims Act talk about fraud against the government. These laws allow everyday employees to bring lawsuits against their employer on behalf of the government. And these are called ketam cases, which is a fancy Latin term for on behalf of the king and on behalf of yourself. Basically, what you're trying to do is recover money that was stolen from the government. So let's talk about how this plays out in the majority of cases. A big portion of these types of cases are in the healthcare world, where big, large organizations are submitting lots and lots of invoices to Medicare or Medicaid. If you find out that your employer is submitting false bills or inflated bills to the government and unlawfully getting money that they shouldn't be getting, well, if you can bring a key TAM case and you can recover money for that governmental agency that's been stolen from, you can get paid a percentage of that. That's how key TAM cases generally work. Um, they also play out with taxes. If you work for a large you know, organization and they're not paying appropriate taxes and you find out about it and you think that you can prove it, you can bring a key TAM case to try to recover money for the government. These cases are all about fraud on the government, all about recovering money for the government, and there have been billion dollar cases where the individual who brings the whistleblower case has made out quite well. The Sarbanes-Oxley whistleblower law is all about corporations that issue publicly traded securities, stocks, bonds, things like that. Most people know that if a company is issuing securities, they have to comply with all sorts of disclosure laws. And those disclosure laws are all about getting accurate financial information from the company issuing the securities so that the investment public is not going to be misled. So Sox made a whistleblower law that says if you are working for that employer and you find out that your employer is not reporting the appropriate financial information or withholding financial information or reporting false financial information, you can blow the whistle. Uh, you can report the employer with information that you reasonably believe violates securities laws, wire fraud, mail fraud, things of that nature, and then you're afforded protection. If you blew the whistle, would it be worth it to actually file one of these cases? What kind of remedies are available to you? Well, in the majority of these cases, you can get the following types of remedies. First, your economic damages. These are your lost wages. If you were making $100,000 a year, then you blew the whistle, and then you got fired. You're not making $100,000 a year anymore. So that's a very tangible economic loss that the jury can measure. Secondly, punitive damages. In egregious cases, if you can prove that your termination was done with malice, oppression, or fraud, then you can be awarded punitive damages, which are meant to punish the employer, to deter the employer from doing the conduct ever again. Third, emotional distress damages. These are often the largest component of these cases. Uh, th these are damages for the pain and suffering that the plaintiff has gone through as a result of the termination. Very real, very significant in severe cases especially. Um, finally, key TAM rewards. If you're filing a False Claims Act case, remember fraud on the government, recovering money for the government, um, you get paid a percentage. Depending on the actual False Claims Act that you're filing it under, you get paid anywhere between 15 to 50 percent. And some of these cases can be absolutely enormous. So uh, this is a very large incentive for certain plaintiffs to file a False Claims Act case. You can also get your attorney fees, reinstatement. Some of them allow for double your lost wages. And so these can be very powerful and very economically viable cases. If you're an employee and you complained about something at work and then you were retaliated against and you feel like you blew the whistle but your facts don't line up with one of the boxes up here, make sure you contact a lawyer for a consultation to see if you have a case. That's all I have for you today. Take care.